You call me a saint, but you know I'm a stranger A willing and able to do what you want You think I'm a thinker Deadly Tarantula Girl coming to you from my private Serpentarium tonight to bring you a long-awaited video and fingers crossed I hope this video has a happy ending and not a tearful ending although I have to say I'm pretty worried so this is a follow-up of my Brachypelma Smith Eye and yes I did say Smith Eye egg sac video uh, here is my incubation chamber that hasn't been in my incubator so I pulled this egg sac on January 2nd of 2020. Today is the 21st, 20th maybe? I don't know, I've been off work for a couple of days. And um, so I have been manually turning this egg sac every 12 hours and I have to confess that it doesn't feel the greatest. It feels a little bit gummy a little bit dense. The eggs have been uh, sticking to the silk. I've been actually uh, working to pull it apart every day to um, make sure that it's not kind of fusing together and I'm really afraid what I'm gonna see when I open this is um, like black fowl eggs that are spoiling. But I don't know that. And so um, under the best circumstances, I would have waited four weeks. Uh, so till the 28th to open this, but I'm so worried, sick about it that at this point, let's say half the eggs have turned. There's a good possibility if I get the bad eggs away from the good eggs, that the good eggs will continue to thrive. And if in another week or two, if I hadn't opened it and separated them, it would have caused all the eggs to spoil. So I like to use the analogy of if you have a piece of moldy fruit in a fruit bowl and um, you take it out, your other fruit will stay usually stay fresh for longer than if you let that mold bloom kind of just spread over all the fruit. So that's how bacteria works and that's kind of the situation we have here if we have some eggs in here that were infertile and have started to spoil. Okay, I'm procrastinating. I do have an incubation chamber ready for the next stage for any survivors, but we're not there yet. I did make one modification to it, which I will show you if we have any good eggs to put in there. So I guess without any further ado, let's just open it and take a look. So I'm going to do this right on the lid. I have my tools here, some paint brushes, a razor, some forceps, some scissors, tweezers, my little spoon that I like to use to move the eggs around. I'm stressing. Uh, if you didn't see the first part of this video where I actually pull the egg sac, I explained that this is a project that's been over 20 years in the making. I've never reproduced this species. And when I got this egg sac, I was so excited and so many people were like, can I order slings? And I was like, hold your horses. I haven't reproduced them yet. <sighs> I hope none of you are let down. I hope I'm not let down. I'm nervous, okay. So let's just get started. Um, so I'm, what I want to see, uh, it's not looking good so far. Hmm. What I would want to see would be what kind of would look like caviar, a bunch of white or, or yellow, um, kind of translucent looking eggs. And you can see there's literal mold in here. It looks like this sack was infertile. You can see there are eggs that are actually black. And then some that are kind of 
just starting to turn. And so we had what looked to be a pretty good pairing between this female and the male that I have. And so this egg sac was obviously a no-go, which is a heartbreaker. Luckily the male did survive the breeding and I do have several females. One, the mother of this egg sac, who still looks really good and I've been feeding her really nice and heavy in case we need to pair her up again. And I am going to try and do that as soon as I'm 100% assured that she's recovered. And I do have quite a few smaller females that are like, they're six years old, so they're old enough. Are they large enough? Mm, I'm not sure. I'm going to attempt pairings with some of those females and kind of see how they react to that male because animals can surprise you sometimes. I've had little tiny versicolor females who I would never have thought were ready to breed and then so they've they've never even been exposed to a male and they drop an egg sac for me. So that's obviously a sexually mature animal that's um, looking to reproduce. <sighs> <laughs> So I am very disappointed that this did not pan out. Um, this is an animal that I would hope to re have reproduced a long time ago, one that I love, one that was the tarantula of my very first interest. Um, it didn't happen this time. I was really excited because I saw this egg sac right after New Year's and I was like, oh my gosh, what an amazing start to the new year. But that's okay. Um, I'm upset, but both my adults are still alive and I have several females actually. So, you know, I, there's always still hope and I'm glad that my adults weren't injured in the process. So am I heartbroken? Yes, I am. Um, I, I, this is kind of a blow to my ego. Uh, I'd like to think that I can reproduce any animal that I choose and sometimes things just happen. Things just happen with the most experienced keepers. So all in all this has been almost 25 years in the making and today was not the day so that's okay. Um, I was going to dedicate this video to Trooper Walsh but now I don't have any babies to send you Trooper. So, I'm sorry, but, um, hopefully I'll have another egg sack in the near future and we'll have a better video to show. So, I, <laughs> I hope you guys like this one and there will be another, more egg sacks in the future, so, um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> have a beautiful day <laughs> and stay tuned in for better news next time. Thank you.